So if you followed my channel for a while, you probably know I'm really into wired ethernet. There's nothing that beats the stability and high bandwidth potential of hardwiring your important devices. But if you live in a house that you can't modify, maybe you rent, how are you gonna run that ethernet from room to room? So here in this opening here, I've got a fiber optic cable hidden in plain sight. It's running from my office over there to my bedroom behind this door. It runs up along the ceiling and down next to this door. And I bet on video, you can't even see it. So today I'm taking a look at the Invisalight home fiber kit. This is a complete kit to run wired gigabit ethernet between two places on your house by hiding it in plain sight. You can glue it into the wall. It includes glue in the kit. You can paint it. The entire cable is less than a millimeter in diameter, which is why you can't see it on video. So this kit contains everything we need to get started. If you're like me and you like going really fast, I'm also going to explore how to run 10 gig over the same fiber. But since this is G657.B3 bend insensitive single mode fiber, we can run anything we could run over normal single mode fiber, which can get up into the range of terabits if you want to spend a lot of money on your endpoints. For most people though, 10 gig, 25 gig, that's no problem over this fiber. The included electronics are for one gig. So if you need one gig, everything you need is in the box. If that sounds good to you, then come along in this adventure. Also, Invisalight sent me this kit and some extra spools to make this video. Now I reached out to them asking for it because this was a product that I legitimately had a need for. I actually had to run ethernet across my house here. Now, well, me and my fiance do own the house. It is a condo, so we can't go into the attic and run wires up there, unfortunately. So this was the best option for me to run 10 gig to my workstation. So that's what I'm gonna do at the end of the video, but I'm gonna start off with the one gig. So I got the kit here. Let's take a look at what's inside. Unlock your internet's potential with fiber. Installation manual, probably don't need that. Test report for my particular spool. Looks like this is the spool itself. I'll pull this guy out of here. This is remarkably small for 40 meters. Looks like these are stickers for installation. A syringe of uh, white glue. The box to mount on the wall that the spool sits in. This one looks like a media converter. And got power supplies for the media converters. Ethernet cables for the media converters. So if you clicked on this video, you're probably familiar with traditional copper ethernet, the RJ45 we know and love. But to make this work, we're using fiber today. And a lot less of you are probably familiar with how to run ethernet over fiber. Now actually fiber ethernet has been around for even longer than RJ45 twisted pair ethernet, but it's not something a lot of people in the home space have a lot of use for. So let's take a bit of a look at all the components of this kit, the electronics, see how they hook up and see how they work. So here's kind of all the key components of the kit, starting of course with the fiber itself. So this guy is very, very tiny. So again, I said it's G657.B3, bend insensitive fiber. We can bend it in all sorts of shapes, things you would normally never do with fiber like this, just fine with this fiber. So we got 40 meters of it on a spool. So now on each end of the fiber, we have to convert back to traditional RJ45 ethernet to use standard networking equipment. So this is called a media converter. There's two of them in the kit. They have an RJ45 jack that you plug on to your switch, your access point, your laptop, whatever. And then this is a transceiver slot, which takes a pluggable transceiver and they include two transceivers. These are pre-installed by the way, I just took them out to show them. And so this is basically all of the laser optics to send and receive ethernet over a single fiber. And so they essentially use different colors of light. That's why they're color coded. So one uses blue and one uses yellow, not literally blue and yellow, but that's just representative. So these two won't interfere with each other and they're sort of a matched pair. So these go on either end of the fiber. These are for gigabit. These to convert the transceivers back into RJ45. These are also for gigabit. They take power, of course. So let's get this guy set up. The fiber has a little dust cap on it. So you're gonna pull it off. Now be careful not to look into the end of the fiber or the end of the optic and make sure you leave these dust covers on as long as possible. 
So I'll pull off a little bit of extra fiber so we can play with it here. Get that guy plugged in. And same for the other side. We've got the end fiber. And which way that way going in. Now we just got to hook up RJ45 Ethernet and I'm off to go. So it's pretty simple. The media converters are converting from twisted pair copper ethernet to fiber optic ethernet. They come pre-configured, pre-set up, ready to go. I got one side hooked up to my router. It's in the closet behind me. I got the other side hooked up to my laptop and we can just pass some traffic across. And there we go. That looks pretty darn stable to me. So another thing I really want to try is to see if I can break this fiber. So normally in fiber, we don't try to bend it too small of a radius because that can break the small glass inside and damage it. But this fiber apparently shouldn't have that problem. So like if I wrap it around my finger and tie it like that, traffic is not affected at all. I can even tie it into a knot. Let's see if I can do this pretty quickly on camera. So there we go. There we go. I got a knot and pull that pretty tight and you know, traffic is still flowing. So this is not something you should ever be able to do with normal fiber and have it survive, but we're passing traffic across this fiber at full line rate, just fine. So the reason we need to be able to bend the fiber into really small radiuses like this, not that we're actually knotting it, is because when I go out there and I actually run the fiber from this room to my bedroom, I need to take some pretty tight turns, especially when I go through the bedroom door. So I have to bend this around the corners of the wall. I have to tuck it into the corner nice and tight so that it's not visible. And being able to make a really sharp bend with this fiber means we can hide it in plain sight and no one will notice it. It also means it's more resilient to abuse despite being so small. It's, I was not able to break this fiber just based on bending it, tugging it, that kind of thing. You could probably slice it. Um, if I run it through the door, I have to be careful not to abrade it as the door rubs on it, that can damage it. But just bending it, it's not really possible to break in the kind of installation scenario we're doing here. So now it's time for me to plan this fiber run. So the distance like in a straight line is only about seven meters. So I'm going from my networking closet, which is in that bedroom, to my TV in that bedroom over there. And I'm just going through this hallway here. Um, I'm gonna use quite a bit of this 40 meters though because I'm taking a very long path. So from my wiring closet, I pop through a hole that I drilled in a previous video. I'm gonna run along the baseboard, which takes me around here. Then I'm gonna run up through this crack in the wall here. So this is like a wood panel board and where there's seams in the panel board, there's a little gap and that's to allow for expansion and contraction of the wood. So I can take my fiber and bury it in the crack, glue it in there. And then when I paint this room, cause it's not gonna stay white, then I'll just paint the fiber and be good. Now, if you don't have these cracks, obviously, um, another good place to run it is around the molding of a door. So in this case, the door is inset and there's no trim molding, but I could really easily stick this fiber in this corner here and glue it and you would be hard to notice it. So, I mean, if you're really looking for it, you could see that there's something there, but this is only 600 microns outer diameter. So it's less than a millimeter in diameter and you're not gonna notice a one millimeter bump stuffed in a corner like this. Now, if I just took it and I ran it straight across the wall, obviously you'd see that, but that's why you're hiding in the corner and stuff like that. So I'm gonna run up across the edge of the ceiling, down under the bedroom door, and then back up and over the bedroom door to the other side. So let's get started. So I decided to fish the flimsy side without the spool through a hole I already drilled in the past for my cable line. And I tried to use the insertion tool to get it through and I just could not get it to fit. So I struggled with it. Then I decided to just pull the cable line out, fish the fiber through, and then, then I got it, no problem. So then I put the cable line back, taped the fiber onto that trim molding there. Then I just kind of scooted along the molding, pulled the fiber tight, taped it, wrapped it around the corner, et cetera, as I went. So if I was doing this without the little crack in the wall, it probably would have been a bit easier since I couldn't fit my finger into the crack. I had to use a little tool to get the tape in there and get the glue in there and stuff like that. But I got it wrapped around this beam here. So I'm following that curve going up the wall I went across to the other side of the room. So now I'm continuing to tape into that uh, top trim molding. Then I'll come down the door here and go through the bottom of the door. Oh, I also dropped the spool of fiber and it rolled away on me, but it survived, no problem. So now I thought it'd probably be a good time to test it. 
So I hooked up one media converter in the wiring closet and the other one to my laptop and it worked just fine. So with the link tested, I decided to glue it. So I decided to start from this point and sort of push all the slack towards the other two ends. So I'm gluing it into this crack here. And um, it took quite a lot of getting used to how to do it. So how to get it around the corners, how to keep it tight with the tape while you glue it. The glue doesn't really hold it very well until it starts to set, which makes sense, but it means that you have to tape the fiber in place exactly where you want it, and then sort of dab the glue along. I also couldn't run my finger along the glue here because it was in that crack. So I was just sort of dabbing the glue periodically the whole way through in this crack. Once I got down to the door frame though, I was able to just run my finger along it and it was pretty easy. So I got better at it over time though. So I got a lot faster at getting the glue done. So here I'm coming up on the drop where the fiber runs straight down the door frame. And I found this part very easy. So if you're not trying to run the fiber in the crack like I am, it's, it's really easy to get it glued into a little gap somewhere in your house. So like this part here was, was super quick and easy and it looks really good once the glue is dried. So for the door here, um, I had to bend it in quite a lot of places to get it to not rub on the door. So I don't know about the doors where you live, but the doors in Finland seal pretty well. So there's a flange so that light doesn't get through and things like that. And so that means there's not just a gap under the door where the cat can fit through like there is in America. So I had to bend that fiber quite a lot and then I ran the fiber under the door to the other side where my TV is. So at this point, I got the fiber installed. I tested everything. It's working fine at gigabit, except that I took the converters back to do some video. But I wanna go fast. I wanna go really fast. So I'm going for 10 gigabit. Now, this is one downside to this kit. The fiber they've included in the kit is a blue SC UPC connector. So that's a SC connector. Let's see if I pull this guy out and you look at it. It's kind of fat. So it's twice as fat as standard LC networking connectors. Now this is the connector commonly used in fiber to the home, like a G-PON, XGS-PON stuff. I think that's why they used this fiber here. But they've used the blue un uh, unangled polish, the UPC, instead of the angled polish green. But I, got, I, I found two transceivers for that. So I got 10 gig transceivers. I bought them from a French company. Um, realistically, it would be cheaper for you to buy adapters to convert this to a standard LC fiber. So I'll put the links in the description for both these fibers that I bought for 10 gig, as well as the adapter parts to go from this to a standard LC. From there, you can go to like a 25 gig or 100 gig even. Um, I'm only doing 10 gig today. So in my closet behind me, I've got a 10 gig switch, my Microtix CRS05. Love that thing. For the laptop today, I've got a 10 gig dongle. As a Mac user, this is like a normal size dongle, I guess, but it's got SFP plus, so we can do 10 gig, and then I can test that to my file server. So let's get this hooked up. So here are the modules I bought online. So these are 1310, 1270 nanometer bi die optics. So they're color coded green and black. That doesn't really mean anything. It's just they're different. So I can pop the dust cover off one, pop this guy in here, get in there. And I'm gonna go put this in my switch in the rack. So this is a little bit tangled up, but oh well, I'll just leave it on the table. So I'll take dust cover off this side, go into transceiver, click. That goes in the transceiver slot, that's upside down. Nick, by the way, it's a 10 gig Thunderbolt Nick made by a company called Sonnet. So it's doing PCIe tunneling to an Aquantia PCI Express 10 gig Nick, and it's supported Mac OS. So here you can see it came up as EN20, and if I do an iPerf, what do I get? Yeah, it's fast. So completely expected, this fiber, single mode fiber, is fully capable of running at 10 gig. You just have to find the right transceivers for it. They've used an SC UPC connector. Um, now I do believe they have another version of this coming out that doesn't include the media converters. They call it the fiber in the home kit. So I don't think that's been released yet as of the publishing of this video, but that version is going to include green SC APC connectors, which are an angled polish. So those need slightly different fiber parts. And maybe I'll have the links to both in the description below. I think if you guys are running 10 gig, that's probably the kit you want. It's essentially everything in the fiber in the home kit. 
except that it um, doesn't include the media converters and the optics. So if you're going at 10 gig or 25 gig, you're gonna buy your own optics anyway, and that's perfect. And so with that done, I guess it's time to just kind of show it off now. So as soon as you come into my house now, the fiber runs right through the middle of the room, and if it weren't hidden like this, it would be very visible. So I was running traditional Cat5, even the really small flexible stuff you can get from some online places, it would still be quite visible in this room. But the 600 micron, less than a millimeter fiber, it sits in the corner, it's glued in, and it blends right in. So this room is already white, so the white fiber blends it just fine. But when I paint the room, I can paint the fiber as well, and it will be completely disappeared. So I hope the solution helped you, and it's something that you like for your own house. If you want to buy any of the things in this video, I have a link down below to the Invisalight fiber kit. I also have the accessories I bought to go to 10 gigabit if you want to go 10 gig. If you're going to go even faster than 10 gig, you can go 25 gig, 100 gig. All of that is possible over this fiber. Super nice. Uh, also, I'm Appelard. If you like the shirts that I wear, most of them are my own. So this cloud free is the new luxury. Friendly reminder to log out for self care. This is one of my favorites. In this video, I also wore the Home Lab Personal Data Center. So if you too have a personal data center at your house, maybe you'd like that shirt. Those are available down in the description below for my Kofi. If you want to chat with me more, I have a Discord server link down below for that as well. Um, you can find me on Mastodon. It's kind of like the Dead Bird site, but it's a Mastodon instead. Uh, and I guess that's it. So I guess I'll see you guys on the next adventure.